Linda here, and I am excited to tell you that we are going to do Kids Talk today. But before we go on air, there's something I need you to do. I need you to find four items in your home to have with you while you watch the show. I need you to find a Bible, a piece of paper, something to write with, and something that tells time that is not a phone, tablet, or computer. I'll repeat the list again and start the countdown, and that's when our show will begin. So you ready for the four things? I have a Bible, piece of paper, something to write with, and something that tells time that is not digital. Countdown starts now. Welcome to Kids Talk. I'm Pastor Brent, your host, and I'm joined here today by Amanda, our co-host. Hello. We are so excited to be back with you on Kids mm -hmm. Talk. It's been a while since our last show, and there's been a lot that has changed since the last time yep. we were here together. One thing, we're not here together. You're not in the room with us today, yeah. and you can see that Amanda and I have decided to be way more than the six feet apart so mm -hmm. that we're following all the rules, and we would just recommend to you guys... Follow all the rules or recommendations. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands a ton. Let's make sure that we beat this thing. Yeah. Now, Amanda, there are a lot of things that haven't changed yes. about the show. Like our expectation of it being a great show as always. And today you're gonna hear Bible story. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make a couple jokes. A few commercials. We're, we'll have the commercial breaks like normal and the prayer wall challenge. You'll have all of those things. So, Amanda, what's first today? The first thing we're going to do is the word of the day. Now, I got to ask you a question then. Mm -hmm. Normally, we would have a guest sitting here on our show, and they would have to be the ones that are guessing the word of the day. Even they don't know what the word of the day is, yep. but there's no guest here. So how are we going to do the word of the day? It's your turn, Pastor Brent. My turn. Your turn. You get to guess the word of the day. So they all are going to know the word of the day, and yep. I don't. Yep. All right. We'll see how this goes. We'll reveal the word of the day to the kids. And now, mm -hmm. are you going to give me any clues so I can get the word of the day? Maybe, but I have a joke for you first. All right. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I'm ready for your joke. Did you hear the story about the hungry clock? I have never heard the story about the hungry clock. How does it go? Eh, it's not much of one. He just went back four seconds. Back four seconds. I'm not sure I'm getting it, but listen, Amanda, Wait. we we don't have time you for this. You said it! You said it! You said it! I said what? You said the word of the day. What was the word of the day? Time. Time. Time is the word of the day. <laughs> well, Amanda, speaking of time, uh -huh. I think it's time for our first commercial break. <laughs> Hey Westgate kids, as you can see, I have our prayer wall behind me. There are lots of good verses on prayer. Keep posting the prayer verses that you find. You should have a Bible with you now at home. 
Take a minute, look through, and find it. If you find a verse, post it on Facebook with your name so that we can put it on a paper for you and put it up on our wall. We want to keep building our wall, and we want you guys to try to beat us to the verse of the day challenge, which is the colored ones. Now, are you ready for our verse of the day? Our verse of the day is Luke 10, 2. And these were, the, were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the field. That is a great verse. I can't wait to see what verses you guys find. And if you're watching this and this prayer wall is something new to you, you are welcome to also post the verses that you find. Just include your name so that we can get you up here on our wall. Uh, stay tuned to our show so that you can see what, what you'll need to do with a Bible, piece of paper, something to write with, and something that tells time. Welcome back to Kids Talk. We are so excited to be back, and it's time now for our Bible stories. So I'd like you to get those things that you gathered earlier in the show. So go ahead and grab your Bible and get it with you. Pick up your pen and paper and have them ready to write. In fact, we're going to start writing right away. We'd like you to grab that paper and write down John 4.43. I'm going to do it too. John 4, verse 43. Three. Now that's where we're going to start today. So grab your Bibles and open them to the book of John. That's in the New Testament. So John, the fourth chapter and verse 43. Amanda, are you getting there? I am getting there. Once Amanda finds that spot, she's going to read us this story. John 4, 43. Chapter 4. At the end of the two days, Jesus went on to Galilee. He himself had said that a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. Yet the Galileans welcomed him, for they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he did there. As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a government official in nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son, who was about to die. Jesus asked, Will you never believe in me unless you see miracle signs and wonders? The official pleaded, Lord, please come now before my little boy dies. Then Jesus told him, Go back home. Your son will live. And the man believed that Jesus had said and started home. While the man was on his way, some of his servants met him with the news that his son was alive and well. He asked them when the boy had begun to get better, and they replied, Yesterday afternoon at one o'clock, his fever suddenly disappeared. Then the father realized that that was the very time Jesus had prayed and told him that your son will live. And he and his entire household believed in Jesus. This was the second miraculous thing Jesus did in Galilee after coming from Judea. Thanks, Amanda. Let's look at what's happening here now. So here's this official that lived in a town and he'd heard that Jesus was in another town teaching mm -hmm. and his son was really sick. And so he went running yep. over that town to, to beg Jesus for help, to beg Jesus to heal his son, because mm -hmm. he'd heard all these stories about Jesus healing people. And so here he was like, Jesus, will you heal my son? Come with me. You've got to come with me. You've got to come with me so you can come and heal my son. And, and he had no idea what was about to happen. Right. That's I think he only had one thing on his mind, and that was his son. Like, he wanted his son to be healed. There was no, like, worrying about anything. Now, Jesus asked him a couple questions, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then he just made a simple statement. Mm -hmm. Now, kids, pull out that piece of paper again, and what I want you to write down is just one simple word to start mm -hmm. this out. Now, it may not seem like it, but remember, this man was talking with Jesus. And we've talked all year long about prayer is just having a conversation with God. And so this man was effectively praying right now. So mm -hmm. we're going to write down on our papers just the word pray. So go ahead and write that down with me. P-R-A-Y. Pray. 
You see, we can come to the Lord and we can ask him for anything. We can pray for healing for our family, for our friends, just like this man came and asked for healing for his son. And Jesus is there to do it. I mean, he's yep. ready to listen to our prayers and answer them. Mm -hmm. Now, this boy, he had no idea that his dad was even doing this, that his dad was asking Jesus for prayer. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing here is that when the dad gets back mm -hmm. to where his son was, he was healed. Now, Jesus didn't have to come with him and lay mm -hmm. his hands on him. He didn't have to be there physically right with him. The dad wasn't there physically with the boy. The boy was healed. And in fact, like so cool that it was exactly the same time when this was happening. It was even, it was the day before, like he didn't even come home on the same day. And it was like a gradual, oh, he's better. It was at one o'clock, the fever left. He was better. Like instantly. I, I don't know about you, but I don't recover instantly when I feel bad. So that's pretty cool. It's really cool. Now, this is actually really good news for us right now because we all know that we don't get to go be with other people right now. We're all having to be at different distances away. So people that I'm praying for right now, I need mm -hmm. to be able to pray for them without being right there with them. And so this is really encouraging to me. So grab your piece of paper again, and we're going to add two more words to it. So now on, we're going to write four people, right? Four people. Now, also, I want you to grab that timekeeping device that you got earlier. I've got mine right here on my wrist. And I'd like you just to take a look at it and see if you can find one o'clock on your timekeeping device. That's why we wanted them to not be digital, right? Mm -hmm. So we could see one o'clock, find one o'clock on it. It's pretty cool to me that the man got home and matched up the time that his son was healed exactly with the time that Jesus had spoken that word of healing over his son. And mm -hmm. it just, it, like, it amazes me that, that Jesus is not bound by any of these other no. restrictions that we're bound by. He's not, he, he didn't come to do tasks and be like time constraint things. He, he, came, he came for the people and, and how, you know, time is helpful. Like in the Bible, that was a really cool thing to see that it was encouraging that it said, you know, at one prayed and at one the son was healed, even though they were not in close proximity. And so that's something that we can take, just be excited in, and be encouraged by. All right, so pick up your pieces of paper again. We're going to write down two more words. Our next two words are even when. So I'm writing down even when. Now, Amanda, mm -hmm. that leads me to our second story. Okay. If, we, if we jump now, in, still in the book of John, mm -hmm. we're going to flip forward a few pages to John chapter 17. So go ahead, go ahead pick up your Bibles with me again, kids, and move, move a few pages till you find John chapter 17. And then we're going to start in verse number 20. John chapter 17 verse 20 and John 17 is honestly one of my favorite spots in the Bible really one of my favorite passages in the Bible because I love seeing how Jesus himself prayed mm -hmm. this is an example of Jesus praying so so this is Jesus actually praying this is what this is saying that's what this is mm -hmm. all right so let's go ahead and I'll just describe this story to you Jesus had just finished praying for himself his, and then he prayed for his disciples and then he jumped into praying for us, mm. which I think is really cool. And, and I'll just read you a couple things out of it real quick. He says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one, as you're in me, Father, and I am in you. May they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. So, Pastor Brent, when it says, for all who will ever believe in me, does that you mean you and me? Like, is Jesus praying for us? Yes. Like, us? That's, that's the thing. Jesus is praying for us. And remember, he was here on earth 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. when this was recorded. And now he was praying for us, which I think is really cool. Now, again, that means that the prayers of Jesus are not bound by time. Oh, yeah. Like, like we might think it. So he was praying for us. And, 
And here's what he says about us. He says, I have given them the glory that you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. He's talking about unity, that we're supposed mm. to be together, that we're supposed to do these things together. He says, mm. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. So we're seeing the whole story here. This is the whole story of, of, of God working through all of creation and having Jesus here in a moment of time. And then him praying for us in the future. So I think it's a pretty amazing thing because... I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Do you right. know what's going to happen in the future? I don't know what's going to happen in the future. No, but Jesus does. And, and he, cool. kn he knew who he was praying for. He knows each of you by name. And if you believe in him, you're included in his prayer that's recorded right here in John chapter 17. Again, I think that's pretty amazing mm -hmm. to think that Jesus is praying for me when he was here on earth. So... So, Pastor Brent, that means that he's also praying for them, right? He, he's praying for everyone that we know, everyone that we see. He's praying for everyone and not in just like a general thing. He, he knows us and he loves us. So, did you guys know that Jesus was praying for you? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Grab your pieces of paper again and those pencils. And I'd write, like you to write down one more thing. It's four words this time. This time you need to write down, they don't know it. So I'll write it down, they don't know it. See, Jesus wasn't trapped by time. He was not. He came for people. He didn't come just to do a few things that seemed cool. His heart was for people. He loves people. He loves you guys so much that he even prayed for you. While he, was, while he was here on earth. So I think that prayer is a pretty important thing. And mm -hmm. it, there's always a good time to pray. Now, that is cool. Amanda, do you know what else it's time for right now? I think it's time for a commercial break. Hey guys and girls, it's Marina here. Um, I'm gonna be cooking here a little bit, but before I start that, I just wanted to tell you, can't do it without my clock. And I know you all had to go and grab your clock. So let me tell you why I use this thing for, you see? You see that red line right there? That's how many times I've burnt my food. And so today as I start dinner, I hope not to move that forward. And, well, see that one line right there? That's how many times I didn't burn my food. So let's start. Today, I heard that chefs put on some chef hats. I'm guessing any hat will do, so I'm just going with what I have here. And I'm really glad that when you're starting to cook, you get an outfit going. They give you a cape, and you really feel like you're in the swing of things here. I'm pretty sure this is how you put it on. I'm guessing this is for fire hazards, and man, I'm guessing this hat is too. So, this is what I'll do here. So, to, uh, today I'm starting some Olive Garden pasta. And I'm guessing all I have to have is some pasta. It's Olive Garden pasta and some olive oil. And since that's all I really need, I'm going to start cooking right now and see how it goes. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I did it again. Alarm clock! Tell everyone about the fire again. All right guys, let's go outside again. Oh no. I did it again. All right, well, we're bringing that number back. It's not one anymore. It's just one that I made. And here's just little pliers. Yeah, that's what I use my clock for. What do you guys use yours for? Let me know and send videos and tag Westgate Kids, okay? Just let me know. Maybe we're in this together. All right, bye. Well, welcome back. Uh, Amanda, mm -hmm. would you remind me that if we get invited to Marina's house for dinner, we should just turn that one down? <laughs> Maybe not ask for pasta. I think that might be a good suggestion. Now, 
kids, go ahead and grab those pieces of paper and let's look at them. After you've written all those words down together, it should point out our point of the day for today. So we can read it together. Uh, Here's like mine. Pray for people even when they don't know it. And I think that's a great thing for us right now. There's times, a lot of people that I've been praying for. In fact, this morning I emailed a friend of mine and just said I was continuing to pray with him for his brother-in-law who I've never met before. So he certainly wouldn't know that I'm praying for him. Mm-hmm. And I think we have these chances to pray for people even when they don't know it. And those pr- prayers are powerful. They're effective. Mm-hmm. And I'd like you kids to just think through that. Who can you be praying for even if they don't know you're praying for them? Mm-hmm. I think there's people that in your family, your friends who you may not get to see as often as you once did. Uh, I think you could even just take a walk with your family and people that pass you on the streets or you see them in their yards. I I think you could just really, you pray for anyone that comes into your mind or that you can see. And here's the thing. When we pray for people, we can believe Mm -hmm. that Jesus will be answering. Just like he told that man to go home, your son is healed. When we pray, let's pray with the belief that Jesus is going to answer these prayers. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to leave you with a little challenge today. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give you some opportunities to pray with your family and for other people. But before we do that, you need to take your papers and we're going to write one more thing down. And if you're like me and you wrote really big, you're going to have to flip over to the back side of the paper. So the last thing I want you to write down today is that thing we've said every single week of the year. And that's that Mm -hmm. prayer changes things. So I'm going to write it nice and big on my paper. Prayer changes things. And there I have it, Amanda. Prayer changes things. We believe this. We believe it for your lives and the people that you come in contact with. And so let me just pray over you real quick as we get ready to finish our show today. Lord, I thank you for each and every one that's watching right now. But I thank you that you have prayed for us and that we get to come to you just like the man in the story and pray to you and ask you for things and believe that you're going to answer those prayers. And so, Lord, would the prayers of each of these kids be effective, Lord, as they get to know you more and talk with you and watch you do the incredible things that you've done all throughout history. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Now, parents, here's your piece. So kids, get your parents' attention real quick because they want to see this. We're going to give you a little challenge for this week, and it's a prayer challenge. So here's what we'd like you to do. Why don't you take time to create a family prayer list? Who can you be praying for as a family? Mm -hmm. Plan a prayer walk where you can go walk through your neighborhood. And just like you normally would talk as you're walking down the street, as you pass different houses, pray for the people in their houses. They won't think you're crazy. They'll just think you're talking. (laughs) It's true. Uh, You could drive. If you're Mm -hmm. going to the grocery store, Mm -hmm. which is one of the few things you can do right now, You could pray for people as you go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Listen, we know that prayer works even if people don't know it. And we know that prayer changes things. I mean, Jesus has been praying for over 2,000 years for us this day. And we didn't always know it or always remember it. So keep praying. All right. That's the end of our show for today. Remember, prayer changes things. We will see you next time. Bye.